Hey guys. Today we are looking at 3.3, .3, which is all about something called function notation. Obviously, we've been talking about functions throughout this chapter so far. We've identified when something is a function or if it's not a function. We know we call it a relation. Yesterday, uh, we looked at um, when a function or when a relation is linear versus when it's nonlinear. So today, kind of dive, diving a little bit deeper into some notation, some different ways that we can write functions, and then actually getting to um, evaluating some functions as well. So we're just, just going to start with evaluating some stuff with a format we're used to. So for this first one here, we're asked to evaluate y equals negative 3x plus 1 when x equals 2. So if we were to do that, all we're doing is substituting 2 in for my x value. So y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 1. Order of operations tells me I have to multiply first to give me negative 6 plus 1. I'm going to collect my like terms and I get y equals negative 5. Now this new notation here is asking me to find f of 2 when my function is f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. Now this is our new notation and we're going to describe it in a little bit. I'll give you a little preview here. Well, if I'm asked to evaluate f of 2, because my function here is described as f of x, that's telling me basically here the exact same thing. I'm asked to evaluate my equation when my x value is positive 2. So if f of if, if I let my x value be 2, f of 2 is negative 3 times 2 plus 1. So we end up doing the same steps. We get negative 6 plus 1, so f of 2 is negative 5. And that again is our answer. Now this notation, um, mm, 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 in this notation, if you guys didn't notice, since we're doing the same problem, once I called it f of x, in the original one I called it y, so f of x is really just a synonym for y. It's my output. Uh, I've said it out loud a couple of times here, but the way that you read this, f parenthesis x, you actually read it out loud and you would say f of x. That's how I, how I did say that. that. That notation is f of x. Where here, we know x and y, like x is my input, f of x is my output. So f, the actual letter f, just that individual one, is the name or the label of the function. It's not a variable here, it's just the label. So we're saying here specifically this equation, we're just naming that equation a specific variable. We could have f of x, we have g of x, h of x, we have tons of different things um, that we could label it, and really it, it depends on personal preference. So if we know that f of x is the same thing as y, if we're asked to rewrite these equations now in function notation, with our f of x notation, it's really as simple as just replacing my y value with f of x. So here, function notation for this equation would just be f of x equals 6x. <clears throat> for part b, if I get I'm just replacing my y value with f of x, 7 plus x squared equals f of x. That's technically fine. Traditionally, we usually keep my <clears throat> function notation here with my f of x in front. And I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit further because I like it in descending variable order, which we'll get into in later chapters. But either one of those two things that I have written there is perfectly acceptable. So um, kind of along the same lines here, if we're asked to evaluate a function for a given value, that means I'm evaluating this function when my x value is 3 in this case. For part A, we're asked to find f of 3 when f of x is 18 divided by x plus 3. So when I do that, f of 3 is just this equation, but replacing my x with 3. So that gives me 18 over 6, so positive 3. So f of 3 equals 3. And that f of 3, or f of whatever that answer is, or whatever the x value is, that stays there. It's a really, really common thing for people that... that or, you know, they, if they get confused, they'll still try and solve for f, and they would like divide by three on both sides to get f by itself. But again, here f of three is what we're evaluating, so that in and of itself stays there because f is not a variable. <clears throat> for part b, again, just getting some more practice in here. If we're evaluating f of negative four, 
that means we're just simply plugging in negative 4 in for my equation, or sorry, in for my x value. Here, be careful because of the way that my numbers are written. It's negative x squared, not parenthesis negative x to the second power. So here I have to square my number first, and then that negative gets applied afterwards. So here, negative, well, negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16 plus 9. So here we actually still have a negative 16 plus 9. So we'd end up with negative 7 is what f of negative 4 is. And that one more so, just be careful with your order of operations because, again, we have to square that negative first, and then we apply the, the negative sign. Most people would look at that as a negative negative 4 squared, so they're going to make it positive first. But, again, that's the big difference here. If I wrote it as negative x squared plus 9, then I would switch my sign to a positive 4 and then square it. But because of how it's written without the parentheses, we have to square first and then apply that negative. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do all of these. I'm going to do a couple of them, maybe like one of each um, on this back side here because we're going through and just evaluating. Now, if you notice, we've got four different um, functions here. We have f of x, g of x, h of x, and then j of x. And again, those letters that we use for function notation are just labels. So if I'm asked to evaluate h of 3, the h tells me which equation I'm plugging it into, and the 3 tells me what I'm plugging in. So let's just jump into that one. Here, h of 3 tells me I'm using this equation. Right? H, h is my function. So if I do h of 3, I'm simply just plugging in 3 into my equation for x. So negative 12 over 3 would be negative 4. <clears throat> if we start getting into some where I'm combining them together, now this is a little more complicated. Um, here, f of negative 3 divided by g of 1. What I would suggest doing would be to just evaluate each of those individually first and then combine them together. So here, I'm going to use red for f. So over here, if I plugged negative 3 into my f of x equation, that is negative, negative 3 squared plus 7. Because again, it's negative x squared plus 7. Here, my parentheses around my negative x, so I'm going to change my sign first and then square. So that is positive 3 squared plus 7, so 9 plus 7. <clears throat> so we end up with positive 16 up top. Switch over to green here. If I'm evaluating g of 1, g of x, the equation is negative 3x minus 1. So that would be um, negative 3 times 1 minus 1. So negative 3 minus 1 would be, whoops, don't know why I put that there, would be negative 4. <clears throat> so when I combine those together, f of negative 3 is 16, g of 1 is negative 4. So f of negative 3 over g of 1 would be 16 divided by negative 4, which is negative 4. Okay, so the last part here is uh, a working backwards problem. So here, if you're given what f of x is equal to, they're going to ask you to find what x value could give you that thing. So it's a little bit just kind of a working backwards problem where now I know what my output is, so I know basically what my y value is, and I'm looking to try and figure out what the input would have to be, what x value would have to be plugged into my function to give me that thing. Now I've kind of changed my mind here. This is not an example that I want to go with, f of x being negative or being positive 5, but the steps are still accurate. So here when we go through and, and try and figure out what x value would have to give you this output, you're going to start by identifying what function is being used and write it out. So am I using it? If you're given multiple ones, like in this case where you're using those same equations from the previous set, f of x, g of x, h of x, and j of x. You're going to figure out what information is being given. So you're going to replace f of x with a y value, just because it makes it a little bit easier to solve. <clears throat> and then you're going to use that information to answer the question. So very generic steps. But here, the way that I will do this, um, let's just look at number 15 first. 15 seems pretty straightforward. So for this one, we're asked to find the x value if g of x is 8. 
So I'm going to start by writing out what my, my equation is for g of x. We know that g of x is negative 3x minus 1. And they're telling me that g of x is 8. So my output is 8. So if I replace g of x with 8, my equation is 8 equals 3x minus 1. And they're asking me to find x, so I just have to solve this equation for x. This is an easy chapter 1 problem. If I go ahead and add 1 on both sides, 9 equals negative 3x, divide by negative 3, and I get x equals negative 3. So that tells me that I would have to plug a negative 3 into my equation in order to get an 8 back out. Okay. Let's do another one here real quick. Uh, let's do 17 since it's right there. For a 17, we're asked to find x if g of x, or sorry, j of x is negative 9. So my equation for j of x is 2x plus 9. So if j of x is negative 9, I'm asked to solve this equation. So here I would subtract 9 on both sides. Negative 18 equals 2x. I divide by 2 on both sides, and x is negative 9. <clears throat> Which is totally fine. That means... I have to plug a negative 9 in in order to get a negative 9 back out. It's basically what these problems are asking for us. That's it for function notation. Uh, homework is up there on the screen. It is page 125, 4 through 22 evens. If you have anything that you're confused on, if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, or ideas, as always, make sure you guys are reaching out and asking for help. Um, and, and again, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. This stuff is new and different. So it's okay if you have questions. You just need to make sure you guys are reaching out and asking for help. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you soon.